The peace of the Lord be with you. And good morning and welcome to everyone. As, uh, as you can see, we have our, our guest with us today, Dr. Robert Bennett, Reverend Dr. Robert Bennett. And um, he will be, be preaching. And um, I mentioned that he is going to um, have a, a, a presentation. That's, words are hard sometimes. A presentation for, uh, for a Bible class in between, um, in between the services. And so we invite you all to stay for that. He'll be talking about Luther Academy. You saw hopefully in your bulletins that we have, have inserts about Luther Academy in there and um, their organization and the, and the work that they do. And we're very pleased to have him present for, on behalf of, of Luther Academy. They do some really great work in, here uh, for pastors uh, and lay people too as well here in the States and also internationally. So I invite you to please join us for that. And then also, again, please join us tomorrow evening as, as Pastor Bennett will be presenting on his book, Afraid, that we read this summer and talking about uh, demonic activity and, and the comfort that we have in the victory of Christ over sin and, and the devil. So uh, I invite you to join us for that. And uh, other than that, I don't think we have any announcements for this week. Our opening hymn is hymn number 521, Christ the Lord of Hosts Unshaken. And we will uh, follow the, the order of service that we've been following, hymnal, hymnal supplement 98. And uh, we will sing that opening hymn after the pealing of the bells.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. O Israel, I will testify against you. I am God, your God. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you. Your burnt offerings are continually before me. I will not accept a bull from your house or goats from your folds. For every beast of the forest is mine, the cattle on a thousand hills. I know all the birds of the hills, and all that moves in the field is mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you for the world and its fullness are mine. Do I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and perform your vows to the Most High. And call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. But to the wicked, God says, what right have you to recite my statutes or take my covenant on your lips? For you hate discipline and you cast my words behind you. If you see a thief, you are pleased with him, and you keep company with adulterers. You give your mouth free reign for evil, and your tongue frames deceit. You sit and speak, each to your brother. You slander your own mother's son. These things you have done, and I have been silent. You thought that I was like your one. I was one like yourself, but now I rebuke you and lay the charge before you. Mark this, then, you who forget God, lest I tear you apart and there be none to deliver. The one who offers thanksgiving as his sacrifice glorifies me. The one who orders his way rightly, I will show the salvation of God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour down upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving those things of which our conscience is afraid and giving us those good things that we are not worthy to ask, except through the merits and mediation of Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament lesson for this, the 11th Sunday after Trinity, is from the fourth chapter of the book of Genesis. Now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain, saying, I have gotten a man with the help of the Lord. And again she bore his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, and Cain a worker of the ground. In the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground, and Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering, but for Cain and his offering he had no regard. So Cain was very angry, and his face fell. The Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry, and why has your face fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door. Its desire is for you, but you must rule over it. Cain spoke to Abel his brother, and when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. And the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. And now you are cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it shall no longer yield to you its strength. You shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, you have driven me today away from the ground, and from your face I shall be hidden. I shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. Then the Lord said to him, Not so. If anyone kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord put a mark on Cain, lest any who found him should attack him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson is from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, the second chapter. And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together in Christ, with Christ, by grace you have been saved and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for our Lord's words in the Holy Gospel. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. These things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. This is the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 18th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and treated others with contempt. Two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, prayed thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I get. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even lift his eyes up to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be
Be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man, man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men, and for our salvation, came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The text for the sermon today comes from Ephesians chapter 2. I remember the first time I took a, a good strong look at that chapter and it made sense of a lot of things for me in the world. And I hope that as we spend our time on it today it'll Help make some sense of all the craziness that, that we see around us even to this day. Because things have been pretty crazy lately, haven't they? The world around us, it has left many of us wondering about what happened. You know, for the most part, we were kind of a conservative country, uh, if you could say that, for most of our, of our history, but things have went in a very different direction recently. And how can things change so fast for us? Well, the answer's actually always been before us, but for whatever reason, we failed to see it, and yet none of this actually should be a surprise and we understand things in view of Ephesians chapter 2. Let's pay a little attention to Paul's words today. The answer is right here, right before us. It reads, And you were dead. You were dead in your trespasses and sins of which you once walked, following the course of the world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work and the sons of disobedience among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. Paul tells us that we are living around dead people, dead people who follow the devil, he says. Moreover, he tells us that we are all born into the same condition. All of us are born in sin and in death. The problem we see raging around us today is the same problem that's been raging ever since even the Old Testament reading today. Sometimes this problem is clear and easy to see and recognize and at other times, it hides itself right under the surface. Now, sure, we all know 
that the real problem is sin. But too often we also forget about the ongoing work of the devil. Jesus' death and resurrection has set us free, free from the power of sin, death, and the devil. But that means that we were also once under his power, and that all the world was under his power. And yes, still most people to this day are under his power. Remember, it was the devil who was the author of sin. He is the father of lies. He lied to Adam and Eve. Satan is indeed the perfect liar. Yet we are children of God. God has made us holy through holy baptism. That means he's connected you and all of us who are in Christ to that crucifixion of Jesus in his baptism. He's connected us to the resurrection. We are already alive in Christ. He's promised to never leave us or forsake us. And yet with all these great promises, we've got to admit that we still doubt God all of the time. Even now, we struggle with God's word and his will. And too often we try to put our wills above his. Yet there was a time that we did not even consider the will of God. St. Paul clearly states that every one of us were born under the power of the devil. That only, the only will that we wanted to follow was the devil's will. Now to be sure, we did not believe that we were following the devil's will. We maybe didn't even believe there was a devil. But it is the truth. The devil has convinced us that we were following our own wills just as he convinced Adam and Eve to follow their will to eat of the tree. Yet the fall of our first parents was a long time ago. What does any of this have to do with us? The answer is everything. It has everything to do with us because we are still under that curse, that curse that they, our first parents, brought upon themselves. What is the curse? He who sins will die. Sure, we all recognize that we will die someday. Even the unbelievers in this world will agree with us on that simple fact. However, they will not accept is how the scripture describes them at their births. And so a lot of Christians won't accept this either. What is the state, state that people are born into? And Paul tells us that's right. We are born into death. Not just physical death, but spiritual death. St. Paul has described us as dead, really as walking dead people before we knew Christ. Spiritually dead people walking about thinking that they are alive, thinking that they make their own decisions, thinking they are free to decide, but really captive to the will of the devil. Listen again how St. Paul describes us. You were dead. In your trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived. There's really no wiggle room here with Paul's words. Every one of us is born into sin, he tells us. Yet God, in his great love, did not leave us in that spiritual death, just like he did, will not leave us in physical death. He did not leave us to be children of wrath like the rest of mankind, no. But God, rich in mercy. Here's Paul's second part. God, rich in mercy. Because of the great love which he had for us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive with Christ. 
By grace you have been saved. You, if you're not in Jesus, you're still spiritually dead. You're outside the grace of God and remain in the hands of the devil. But we do have God's promises upon us that we've already died and risen with Christ. And yet, as we think of this problem, I remember I mentioned as I first kind of thought about this text many, many years ago, it kind of opened up a lot of things for me. You see, that's why we have so many false religions in the world. That's why people continue to follow the devil's lies. And really, that's why our nation, not just our nation, but the world itself, is in the state that it is. As Christianity declines around us, and it is, the light of Jesus is sometimes replaced by the darkness of sin. There was a book written a long time ago, I think it was early 80s, it was titled, How Christianity Changed the World. The author writes about all the sinful practices that were, were pushed out of these various cultures that became Christian when Jesus broke in with his word. However, you were to go back and read that book today, and it'd be interesting to do, by the way, if you get a chance to do that. Go back and read that book today. Just 40 years later, yeah, it's been 40 years already, most of what the author describes as being pushed out of our culture by the bringing in of Jesus. It's now all back. And it's not just back in our culture in the open, but now it's deemed by our culture to be good and something that should be engaged in. That sin is good. That is the lie of the devil. What you hear and see around you is nothing new. It's just back where you can see it again. It's not hiding like it was before. The unbelief in the sin around us today was the same sin and unbelief found during Jesus' time. And just like in those times, the only help for someone who's lost in that deep darkness of sin is Jesus. And after Jesus' crucifixion, you might remember, the apostles, they, they went and they hid. They were afraid. They hid in a house and the fear of their lives, they thought that they would be next to be crucified. The society around them wasn't Christian, and yet Jesus appeared to them in the midst of all of that, and he said to them, don't be afraid. My peace be upon you. And because of Jesus' death and resurrection, his peace is upon you. You are in Jesus. You are baptized into this crucifixion and resurrection. You hear his word of life, the word of the gospel. Jesus for you. Therefore, any word, no matter how appealing it might sound, that is contrary to God's word is a lie of the devil. It's really that clear, even though most of our world would not accept it. While you are no longer spiritually dead, no, you're alive in Christ now. Like the unbelieving world, you still remain connected to the world around us. We don't get out of this world. We still have to deal with all of these things around us. And so Paul's words of our grace, that we have been declared righteous by God, are wonderful and comforting words. Indeed, we are still sinners. But God declares us to be righteous because of the work of Jesus. And that declaration frees us from sin and death and the devil. Yet this truth needs to be constantly in our ears. It's a truth that comes attached to the body and the blood of Jesus who comes to you in the sacrament of the altar. And in the end, all these things about Jesus are about his presence, that he's with us, not just in our memories, in an abstract way, but really with us whenever we hear his word and receive his sacraments. And where Jesus is, Satan loses his power. 
He loses that power. You see, your circumstances, they have changed. You no longer need to listen to the lies of Satan. By grace you have been saved. And this is the free gift of Jesus, the gift of the cross for you. By the way, the crucifixion of Jesus accomplished more than just transferring you from the, the kingdom of death into the kingdom of life. The crucifixion of Jesus was an exorcism of Satan. The devil, he's a defeated foe. And the only real power he has is the power of his lies and the power of fear that he uses all of the time. But this is not the case for the unbelieving world. They are spiritually dead servants of the devil. And therefore they do the devil's work. Destruction of the families... Anarchy in society, the removal of God's holy word. Paul is clear about this when he writes, God being rich in mercy, talking about you and what Christ has done. Because of his great love, which he has loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive to Christ. By grace you have been saved. You have been made alive. Together with Christ Jesus, you are baptized. Death, it's defeated. There's nothing to fear. Life is promised, no matter what. God loved us through Jesus and did everything necessary to save us. Therefore, let us never be afraid, but simply cling to Jesus until that day that he takes us to be with him in paradise. In times like this, in times in which we face in this world that are new to many of us, it's always good to remember Jesus' words, of course. But these words most especially. Now when these things begin to take place, straighten up, Jesus says, raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Indeed, your redemption is already here. The Redeemer of your souls speaks into your ears. He says, taste and see his forgiveness in his body and his blood. His mark is upon your foreheads and upon your hearts to mark the redeemed in Christ. His peace is upon you. Don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. And when you think otherwise... Remember these words of the Lord. Amen. May the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds with Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please rise for prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their need. Be merciful to us, Heavenly Father, for daily and much do we sin and transgress your holy will. For the sake of the perfect life and sacrificial death of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, forgive our sins. Fill us with your Spirit that we would remain humble, never forgetting that we have been saved by grace through faith, which was not our doing but your gracious gift in the victory of your Son, Jesus, over sin, death, and the devil. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be merciful to our neighbors, especially those who have sinned against us and done us harm. Give us patience and strength that we would deal with them gently and humbly, and that we would be ready to forgive as we have been forgiven. Lord, in your mercy. Be merciful to your church, both here and in every place. Send forth faithful servants to deliver your grace and mercy to sinners in need. Defend all pastors from arrogance and pride, and strengthen them in the faithful preaching of your word that true unity in faith would be found wherever Christ crucified is proclaimed. Lord, in your mercy. Be merciful to our leaders, that they would exercise the authority given them with wisdom and righteousness, so that we would be enabled to live in freedom and peace. Bless us with thankful hearts for our daily bread. Be with those celebrating the gifts of daily bread, 
especially Lillian Winkleman, Brian Brown, Roy Harris, Betty and Bill Tanzer, and Lori and Mark, Ul Lori and Mark Ulrich, as well as all celebrating birthdays, anniversaries, and other joyous occasions. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Be merciful to those in need, especially children who lack food or clothing and shelter, provide for their needs, and for the needs of all those in need of employment. Look in mercy also upon all orphans who are in need of parents to care for them. Provide them with loving fathers. Until such provision is realized, bless those who care for them, that they would do so in love, which is filled with mercy and compassion. Lord, in your mercy. Be merciful to the sick and the sorrowing and those in need of your care. Be with all of those listed in our bulletin. Leslie, Gary, Peggy, CJ, Anne, Jennifer, Isaac, Blake, John, Cheryl, Nancy, Tim, Richard, Phyllis, Christine, Jim, Cassie, the Horwath family, Kevin, the Cooley family, Mary Jane, Eleanor Kulaga and family, Steve, Gail, Sonny, Tyler, Bruce, Rod, Deborah, Lisa, Kathy, Dorothy, the Nehus family, Joyce, Carol Ann, Levi, Lena, Leah, Jurgen, the Reilly family, Sharon, Sharon, Art, Judy and Kurt, Don and Gail, Noah, Chris, Mike, Ellie, Addison and Nancy that they would receive not only temporal relief, but that in all times and in places, and under all circumstances, they would know the forgiveness of their sins and the hope of eternal life, one for them in Christ Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Your Be merciful to those who come to the holy altar today, that they would approach your throne of grace humbly and with reverence, and that they would receive the true body and blood of Christ in faith and for their highest good, being united in one holy fellowship with all your saints. Lord, in your mercy. Your into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we continue with the preparations. Please rise as we continue with the service of the sacrament found beginning on page 9 of the bulletin. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead, and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth adored, heaven and earth with full acclaim, shout the glory of your name. Sing Hosanna in the highest. Sing Hosanna to the Lord. Truly blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve, who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In 
In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Just do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. O Jesus Christ, true Lamb of God, you take the sin of the world away. O Jesus Christ, true Lamb of God, have mercy on us, Lord, we pray. O Jesus Christ, true Lamb of God, you take the sin of the world away. Have mercy on us, Jesus Christ, and grant us peace, O Lord, we pray. Now this is the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in body and soul, in the one true saving faith to life everlasting, depart in his peace. Amen. We continue with the New Communistan on page 11 of the bulletin. O Lord, now let your servant depart in heavenly peace. For I have seen the glory of your redeeming grace, a light to lead the Gentiles unto your holy hill, the glory of your people, your chosen Israel. All glory to the Father, all glory to the Son, all glory to the Spirit, forever three in one. For as in the beginning is now shall ever be, God's triune name resounding through all eternity. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the salutary gift. We implore you of your mercy that you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Our closing hymn is hymn 566, for, uh, By Grace I'm Saved, and number 566, you can find on page 13 in the book.
Since I am saved by grace. 